morning. We're finishing up breakfast around here. I thought it would be fun to do a farm chore video. Lots of you have wanted to see our homesteading and farming oh, routine. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you get. I'm gonna do morning farm chores. Oh. I'm gonna do probably a midday check-in and then our evening chores. And you'll just see what it's like on our farm of seven goats. We have two great Pyrenees. We have 50 some mm -hmm, chickens. We also have 30 meat birds in a dome, and then we have 50 brand new meat birds. Those are the Jumbo Cornish Cross in a outdoor cage. I'll show it all to you, but I'm, I'm trying to tell you before I get you out there. We have a variety of ducks and some geese. Okay, so let's go do them farm chores. So when it is farm chore time, uh, whoever's available, we just all jump out. You know, different folks are doing different things. Some mornings I can't get out and help with any of it. If I can't help in the morning, I can help at night. Uh, just like this morning, Naomi's doing other stuff. Um, Gabriel might be coming out, but Liam's with me, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. We've got to show you Liam got so inspired yesterday to make us a scarecrow for the corn patch go on in there Liam so you can do just wait okay we're getting to farm chores we get distracted look at this scarecrow and what's his name Leo Leo Liam used my old hat I gave him that Jazzy had got a hold of and started eating uh, you used one of your dad's old welding mask right and you put some duct tape and you shoved hay up in the mask He's got an old Star Wars shirt, some old work gloves, an old pair of size 8 boy pants, got the egg catcher. Yeah, size 10, excuse me. So here's how the garden's doing too. Travis is going to get me some more straw today. Lots of you have asked about when we're harvesting the potatoes. A lot of them have bloomed. I see some blooms way down yonder. So now it's just the process of waiting for everything to die back. Everything will just look dead and like we haven't done nothing, <laughs> but then it'll be uh, time to harvest. So Liam, I love that scarecrow. Thank you for doing that. So whenever we go out in the morning, step one that we do is we gather up every water bucket, every waterer from everywhere. It's like we're, we're waking them up for the morning. Now at night, whenever we tuck them in, when we do our nighttime farm chores, we do waters to set them up for the night. So that's the, the big thing to focus on first thing. So you boys go around. Daniel can even do this too, right, Daniel? You got to put the kitty down though, sweetie. Get every water bucket from everywhere and put them over by our little duck pools. While they do that, I'm going to take a scrap bowl down to the chickens. This is our wild variety scrap bowl this morning. Someone got ambitious with some jelly sandwiches. Odds and ends, there's a lot of eggs, eggshells under this because I made about three dozen scrambled eggs for breakfast. So the turkey jokers, they are out right now. They're actually, they are going to be processed. We are butchering them here later this week. This is baby goat. And once mama goat's done pee in here, come on mama goat, finish up. We can't show that on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> there's mama goat. So they have a goat yard, but in the morning we let them out. And then Jazzy is down there in the grass already out. And Amelia is getting the waterers out for the baby meat birds and for the rabbits. And there's a little good morning farm kitty. I think that one's panther. And here's the ducks out already. Those are, I believe you say it, rowan ducks. Yes, turkeys, they see I have this scrap bowl. And then mama goat and baby goat, they just free range and eat all kinds of extra things. That's what Jazzy's doing too. We are gonna dump this and refill it for the day. This is like duck water. Now these babies were let out of their little free ranging coop already. This is a variety of baby uh, Pekin duck females. We have two males because they sent us two thinking something would happen to one, but uh, both made it on delivery. Then we have three mystery geese, and then the little black ones are black Asian pullets, and then we have three guinea hens. These are some other pullets, and they are just, we've put one of the feeders out. So kids are already jumping in doing chores, but this is the chicken tractor that these little ones are sleeping in at night for the, for the time being. And they just got their waters replaced. They get confused. Actually, yesterday was the first day I did a tour on Instagram, was the first day I let them out of this. So they'll find their way around here in a minute. But this is the, um, the chicken tractor I found on Facebook Marketplace for $130. I was using that for rabbits, and then I started to get a lot of messages about how rabbits dig out. 
So rabbit tractors aren't a good idea. I don't know, I'm a little confused on it right now because I do know some folks who have their rabbits out on fresh grass. All that to say our female rabbit uh, started to make her nest. She is back in a rabbit hutch by herself. She's making a nest to have babies. Here are our meat birds and our meat bird dome. We just got a tarp over that. They got lots of shade and I will, I'll show you here shortly. I move them every couple days. I just moved them yesterday up to fresh grass, but to show you how I do it, I will move them over here, here shortly, here shortly. So here is, we've got about a 30 foot or so chicken run. This is the third one I've had Travis and boys do for me. We've had one at um, Farmhouse or Forest House and now the Forever House, yay. But it's made out of dog kennel. And then Travis is an expert pipe bender. And actually I think he had Zion. He showed Zion how to bend the pipe for this one. They bend pipe and then run netting along the top. We also do another layer of mesh netting around here. So these birds have been in the coop all night. I'm going to, um, I dump their scraps in their run here, let them eat, and then they will be going out for the rest of the day to free ranging. And then here is, I really like this waterer. It's uh, big enough for 75 or so birds. Yeah, and I don't have 75 birds here, believe it or not. Anyway, but we, we dump all the water every morning, so that's on the list. But I'm just, I just dump this in the run. Again, I don't know the history of these various scraps. This is a scrap bowl since yesterday morning. Maybe those sandwiches fell. I don't know. I'm like, why is there perfectly good peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on here? Mama don't know all the answers, but anyway it goes, this will be morning scraps for the chickens. And now these eggs are what I used to make breakfast yesterday. And there were also some leftover scrambled eggs for this morning. I always feed my chickens back their eggshells cracked how they are. I've never had chickens become egg eaters. Some folks break them down and bake them and crush them up real fine. You can certainly do that. I haven't done it and I've never had an issue. So you don't have to do it my way, I'm just saying. For when some folks say, Jamerell, you're supposed to crush them up and bake them first, I don't, and my chickens eat them. It gives them calcium back to make more eggs, and I've never had an issue with it. So, uh, as I say, your mileage may vary, ha ha. She will, yeah, she'll be the first to have the scraps. So anyway, you can hear them in here. Yeah, Gabe, Gabriel brought a, a lone chicken. Thank you, Gabriel. They're ready, you guys ready? Woo, yeah. We have a few young pullets. Boy, that's a pretty chicken right there. A few young pullets that, um, maybe four or five that have been staying out. We're, we're still training them to this new yard. So with that, actually, I, I forgot what I was doing here. We've been leaving them in these last few days while they train. And what that means is they're learning that this run is now part of their home. Gabriel's working on catching that pullet. Good job, Gabriel. They're learning that. So normally what I would do and what my what I have done in the past and what I will be doing with these chickens is in the morning I might throw them any scraps if I have a scrap bowl gathered up. Then I leave the doors open and they can free range. We have seven acres. They usually stay within an acre or so. They do not run off. I've had that question a lot. People want to know if the chickens run off, but they don't. Um, none of my chickens ever have. They get homebound to the farm and where their water is, where their food is. Again, they get to know and love their run and their coop. So they don't go far and they're a family. They stay together. And there's uh, Mohawk, our naked neck rooster. <laughs> so anywho, what I normally do is feed them scraps, let them out free range for the day. And then when they come back in the evening, in the summertime, I might give them a little bit of their chicken feed, but they're able to forage on the land and free range. Don't heavily do chicken feed in the summer, especially to birds that are able to get out and eat their own bugs and such. Now in the winter, it's different. I supplement with more feed. <laughs> Almost got her, Gabriel. You're working on it. Woo! A little morning chicken chasing. But for these birds, this is what I want to tell you they'll be different with this farm tour video. I actually want to leave them in this yard area for a few days. Yesterday was day one, today will be day two, tomorrow will be day three, so probably on day four I will open the cages and let them free range again. I'm going to give them their chicken feed today. I always have it on hand because I'm training them to this yard. So I use food to train 
all my animals, whether they're goats or sheep or chickens or dogs or cats or rabbits. <laughs> and that's how my farmer mama's always done it. The food teaches them really, really quick again where home is. Chicken breed wise, these beautiful uh, white and black ones, those are Brahmas. This one that's lighter white, she's a, a pullet Brahma. She should be laying here soon. Then these medium sized brown, you know, they're, they're pullets too. They're not laying yet. They are Isa Browns. I've never had those before, so that's something new for this year. This beautiful one is an Easter Egger breed. This girl here is my other Easter Egger. These black and white ones, I've, I've had these many times. These are barred rocks. They're super hardy. If you're just starting with chickens, barred rocks are a great breed. Uh, that's Mohawk down there. Oh, showing us who's boss. Yeah, yeah, Mohawk. They're talking to each other. So Mohawk, his neck is like that. That's his breed. He's a naked neck rooster. He is fighting for a sausage with an ice of brown. He's an excellent rooster. Um, this smaller bird walking out there, again, she's not full grown yet. She is a gray leghorn. That is my chicken right there. That's Victoria. She's a bantam. She's not gonna get much bigger. In here we have some gray leghorns. Uh, that little guy there, he is a bantam. We're pretty sure he's a, it's a rooster. These two little guys with that beautiful pattern on them, those are bantams. So we got 10 bantams from Tractor Supply. And then these in here are a variety of little pullets. And so I raise them separately until a point and then I introduce them together. There's one of our lone chickens. And then another one is walking, walking down there. So yeah, like I said, we got four or five that we need to get caught and trained during this new chicken run time. And then like I said, here, two more days, all of these will be out um, all day, every day, free ranging. This one here is a white leghorn, and that's it. So these guys are done. I've been collecting these, of course, from Tractor Supply. These fun little signs I'm gonna put all over my cage. Then Liam hung up my, uh, we've got a little flag, so I'm just gonna, you know, jam it all up. Got some chimes in there. Someone asked me on Instagram why I have chimes. Just from forest living, I got used to putting bells and chimes and noise making things on the cages from predators. So if you can get some jingly things on there, some folks say that helps. There's my rooster decoration and then there's another little rooster sign. So, okay girls. And what I do for their water, since it's so heavy, is I carry fresh buckets of water down here. Somehow that just works better for me. And this will be gone, I mean, within an hour. Also what happens is mama goat follows me around, baby goat follows me around, uh, Jazzy will probably come find me at some moment. You're like, where mama is, that's the food. You enjoying your leaves there, mama goat? Mm-hmm. And Mama Goat, this she's full grown. She's not getting any bigger. She's not even up to my knee. She's a Nigerian dwarf. And then Baby Goat. Hey, girlfriend. Hi. I know. I know. It's that time. So at night, uh, Mama Goat and Baby Goat and Jazzy sleep in the big goat yard with the dogs. Here's the other side of our dome. This is Zip Tie Dome. Not sponsored. Don't know the people. I was just Googling. And we have a variety of age birds in here. Four big ones. Um, they're they're going to be butchered here this week with the turkeys. And you see, they just, they are raised for meat. They feel like big blobs of jello. They're so huge, they can hardly walk. And if you don't butcher them, they, um, they start having heart attacks and dying. It's a miracle to raise them to this point. I've got, look, look, see, they know. I know. Uh, and then the other ones, then I've got some medium-sized ones. They've still got a few weeks left and a whole lot of little ones that have until middle of August. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you about this breed. So Jumbo Cornish Cross, they will be at least five pounds a piece whenever I butcher them. These are raised for meat. They don't lay eggs. They don't re reproduce. So they're not sustainable in that way. I wouldn't be able to have them at home or ra breed them at home. I'd have to however they do their breeding at the hatchery. Um, hey girlfriend, you're looking good and healthy though. Yes, babies. And they don't feather out completely at this age. There's nothing wrong with them. These are three or so weeks old. Uh, it takes them a bit to get all their feathers like this beautiful bird here. I was explaining something to Amelia. Sorry, my camera battery died for a minute and uh, you missed a few farm happenings. So Amelia, she's working on feeding and watering her boy bunny. So for the tractor up on the hill, 
that the baby ducks, geese, and the few little chicks are living in right now, you don't need to fill that feeder in the morning now because starting yesterday, we're letting them out during the day. We're gonna feed them at night. And with their cage door open, all the other birds, instead of free ranging and getting bugs the good old fashioned way, they'll just come and eat those baby birds food. You got all that? So only, it's one less job, only feed them at night. Now Gabriel is going, he has got some feed, working on catching those birds. Turkeys are gonna follow him. Oh yeah, there are a few up there, and there goes the turkeys. But believe me, with all this green grass and sunshine and bugs and plants, they will feed themselves. <laughs> Gabriel's trying to pull them in. He threw some feed down and now he's, he's, there's a white leghorn he's working on catching. So once the chickens are trained to their new yard, it won't be a matter of catching them. For 97% of our chickens, there is no catching. Again, the only few we're trying to catch are like five rogue pullets who at night they've been sleeping in a tree, kind of just doing their own thing. We have to train them to the coop in the yard. So that's why that's happening. Good job, Amelia. So yeah, kids doing chores behind me. So total, we have three, I think you say it, Rowan. It's like a R-O-U-E-N, I believe. Anyway, we have three of those. They're about nine weeks old now. <laughs> Sorry, Gabriel's calling those chickens. They get big quick. They're a dual purpose bird. People raise them for eggs and for meat. They get to be about nine or 10 pounds. Because they're so big, they're flightless. Then we had a family member give us five of the babies. So they're already bonded as a family, which is nice on a farm. They're just gonna live their best life. And uh, anyway, they saw the goats are gonna come up this way. We lost one of the babies. It had just gone to be with Jesus one morning. Hey, baby goat. She's like, come on, mama, where's the rest? So that's what we have in ducks right now. Then, here come, these are white pecan ducklings. And so those, probably all the females together, and then the two drakes, the males, are over with the three geese. And they're just wandering around the front here. Here's the turkey jokers eating up the feed that Gabriel was using to, again, try to catch, there's, we call her lone chicken. Gotta get those last five up. So over here, there's two guinea hens in there and two uh, black Asian breed birds. I've read good things about that breed and I got all that Tractor Supply had. I need to order more at some point or there'll be a breed that I work on hatching on my own. They um, are another good dual purpose bird for eggs and for meat. Now these turkeys, these jokers are at least 20 pounds each. They are very heavy. I'll, um, I'll put my camera down, pick one up for you, and you can see how big they are. <laughs> big, big old turkey. He's had a good life. We've raised him. I got him for $1.75. He was half off at Tractor Supply, so I got six of them. I think next year we'll do at least 12. So what you think, buddy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. But yeah, he's gotta be 20 pounds, gotta be. Oh, okay, go back, go back to what you're doing. So again, mystery breed geese, you all can let me know what you think they are. Uh, they very well could end up being used for meat. Some people have told me different breeds to so just get really mean and difficult, but I'm just trying to raise a variety of poultry for different reasons for my family. So we got one little guinea hen in there. And if I can show you, the um, the male Pekin ducks have a pink stripe on their face, their head down that way. And down here, Amelia's filling up water tubs. Good job, Amelia, you can fill up the bigger one. Excellent. So this is just a sandbox that a friend gave us. I've talked to several homesteaders. The biggest question that I get is, what about a pond for the ducks? And so ducks don't have to have a pond, but they do need water to dunk their heads in when they eat. You can see these little ducks are already coming over in these geese. So we will look out here and at any given time, we'll have, uh, they even, that's why I set out little containers too. Whenever they were younger, you know, one of them would sit in there and even now that they're bigger. So we'll look out here and we might have one in here and one of each of these. They just, they have plenty of water available. That's, that's my job is to have water available for them. And then this, um, I just set out actually yesterday and thought we would try it. It might be too high off the ground. Uh, ducks, I've heard so far, we've only raised them when, as a kid, so I'm learning, but they don't like walk up a ramp. So the kids were just putting them in there or making steps for them. They can get in and out of these low things though. 
Another good idea I've heard a bunch is folks want to know if we're going to dig like a little pond, and I'm sure we will. That sounds right up Travis's alley, but that may not be a project we get done this summer. But again, lots of homesteaders raise lots of birds using little pools. So right there, the ducks with the pink stripes, those are the males with the pecans. And they actually, baby ducks don't get in water to start or you have to towel them off, it's a process. So these are just now starting to get in water too. That's why I added in the second bigger pool. Here are some of our feed trash cans. Liam is getting goat grain and sheep grain. We've switched to an all stock feed that's good for the sheep and the goats. We got sheep and goats down there and other pens. We'll go down and see that in a minute. Um, Liam already got their water. I'm gonna go check on all the meat bird food. Amelia also, Amelia and Gabriel, got the smaller meat birds. I haven't shown you them yet. They got them their water. And I don't see their feeders up here, so actually I'm gonna turn around. Someone probably brought them down and hadn't got to that yet. So these are the next load of 50 Cornish Cross. That'll be meat birds. I'm going to, uh, we have this large outdoor enclosure for them, but I'm moving them up here today. And they have water, but I will be refilling their food. I will give you the history of this cage. You can see it's a pretty good size, especially for lots of baby birds that you still want to get out on grass as soon as possible. I think I got this for $75 this spring. I have raised a variety of pullets. I mean, a lot of those birds you saw. This has just been such a good, versatile cage. When they're small, they can get through these bars. Sorry, lots of airplanes going overhead this morning. We use this mesh and zip ties and that just helps provide a layer uh, to keep them in. And also uh, once in a while if one does get out, it's another example of that bonding to home base. They work hard to get back in. Um, there's lots of shade here, but I want them to have a little bit of sunshine. This is all fresh now for them to pick and you can see different ones are in there picking. And then this is what it looks like where they were. I moved them here, um, I believe two days ago and it just, it gets messy really quick. So now this area will recover and have extra fertilizer. And so every day or every other day, I'll just move them up in the shade and then I probably, then I scooch them over and I'll move them back down. And here in another two weeks, they'll be big enough to go in the dome and that'll work perfect because I'll have more of those bigger birds in there processed. As kids are done with different jobs, they will ask me, okay, is there anything left to do? So I told uh, Gabriel to go ahead and give Mama, Baby, and Jazzy some grain. Jazzy's gonna get most of her grain whenever I have her on the milking stand. Um, then she'll be at free range with Mama and Baby. We still give the goats that we let free range around the property. Some grain in the morning, grain at night. But really they need hay and they need roughage. So we don't heavy grain them all the time. Uh, they'll get more grain in the winter and more hay in the winter. Um, now our baby goats, sorry the dogs see Naomi dumping something and for some reason they're, they're barking at her pouring that out. It's okay. Then the other goats that we have currently are being trained to their new yards. We have the boy goats in one. Then we have Carmen who's a younger girl, La Mancha goat and two sheep and another. We'll see that in a minute, but I'm gonna finish up with these little baby meat birds. With these waterers, you have to watch if they're not level, they'll keep pouring out. So I'm watching this one for a minute. Sometimes they will just empty themselves. And I do have my birds going up a hill here. And something that I read about the Jumbo Cornish Cross, I think I came in under the radar and did it right, but that you need to feed the Jumbo Cornish Cross the special meat bird food. It's heavy protein, helps with their big weight gain. You need to start that from as soon as possible early on. Some people I have read, like in some Facebook group forums, if they didn't start them on the special meat bird food, then whenever they got to butchering time, they might've had three or four pound birds. So anyway, I think eyeballing my great big ones that are about to be processed, I think they're over five pounds, think we're good, but we'll see. Butchering table tap. And then I try to space out their different waterers at different parts. So these guys have three different waterers here and their feeder down there. Lots of different ways to do this. Um, also because it's summer now and you know, heavy heat, I have these guys out on grass as early as possible. I have my brooding coop that I'll show you here in a minute. This is my 
uh, just a shed that came with the house and I'm so glad it did. We used this as our first chicken coop when we first moved here. I've used this as a brooding house. I've realized raising different poultry that uh, it's just nice to have a a building outside if you're doing large numbers of birds. I was able to do small loads of my pullets just in our feeding room in the basement. But especially with the meat birds because they get so stinky so quick, I've been able to raise all of those outside in the brooding house. I have their warming plates set up in there. It's a mess right now because I just got those birds out so I'm not showing it yet. But maybe I'll show you next time when I get the next load of meat birds and have it ready for them. Right now it's just resting with nothing in it. I raised these birds the first two weeks in there. There's another load of meat birds coming end of August from McMurray Hatchery. I'll raise them in there. And then after that, I'll probably use this as one of my hay storage buildings um, for this winter. These birds were all from Well Patchery. It was a great delivery, did not lose one. I had a hard delivery with my first set this year. And those four meat birds that I'm getting ready to process are all that made it out of 50. Many of those were dead or died the first day. So anyway, Well Patchery. Did, did well with these. And McMurray is who I have my other load coming from. So a large number of, I think I've got maybe 25 or so, um, of the smaller meat birds that you saw in the dome, I got those at Tractor Supply. So Tractor Supply has done me well this year. I think I had, didn't see any birds last time I went because I always checked, but yeah, they've just, they've kept it up and I've appreciated that because it's been hard with some of the deliveries by mail. Although Cackle, Cackle Hatchery is who I got the pecan ducks, the guinea hens, and the geese from. Those came a couple weeks ago too. So, so cackle and whelp, and coming up soon, McMurray are the hatcheries I've had good experiences with this year. Also in the past, my dog see me in the past, mypetchicken.com is who, like my barred rock girls and my Easter eggers, a lot of those hens I've had for over a year now. Gabriel's doing cat water. You just hand fed the little goat, the baby goat's baby yeah, sheep. They okay. love the corn. They love, yes, they love it all. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you all our little goat and sheep setup. Then I'm gonna milk Jazzy. Kids have already watered dogs and done that too. So again, big family effort. Mama's gonna milk a goat. This is Glacier, one of our great Pyrenees. Hot girl in the shade. They like to dig holes. Oh, and there's, woo, woo, woo. There's avalanche running through. Oh yeah, okay. Case in point, JMRL, why don't you show your big white dogs on the internet? Cause they're doing this. <laughs> They're laying in mud holes, having a good old time. They even do this in residential communities, anywhere you have a great Pyrenees, any, uh, whether they live inside in air conditioners most of the day, whatever, they will dig as soon as they get access. So we consider that part of the good life for our dogs. They have lots of digging opportunities and they don't dig around the fence. Yeah. They like to dig around trees and shade and make themselves a hole. Thursday, I'm going to spend the first half of the day processing the turkeys and those four jumbo jello meat birds. And then in the afternoon, we're going to heavy wash and work through the, the wild mane of these dogs because it'll be a dirty, hot, even sweatier day. Seems like a good day to to bathe them. You have to look over on Instagram. I've been doing these like little farm tours some mornings and I show the animals getting out like what I've done today but I've got more over there in my stories and then here we've been working on different trees that are down splitting them for firewood we have a lot more wood than this and we've given away a bunch of wood to friends who also heat in the winter this is a wood splitter and then our oldest son comes and he runs the chainsaw a bunch so I'll show you our little setup over here baby goat you being nosy Mm-hmm. So then here we have a smaller yard and it's been eaten down pretty well. And that barrel, it just got water in it. So that's the whole, that's the whole science behind why it's upside down. We've been keeping the La Mancha dough. We also rotate them out, but we also, I like to have a place for them at night, right? So we have the La Mancha dough in here and then we have two little sheep. Here's one. This is Rosie. Hey, Miss Rosie. She's a Katahdin sheep. And some folks raise sheep for meat and milk. This breed of Katahdin sheep are raised heavily for meat purposes by farmers. That's what I'm raising them for. So we have Wooly, Wooly the talking sheep. He is going to be our ram. And then we have also two unrelated does here. We have Rosie and Luna. They're gonna be the mamas. And then we have Sean, Sean the sheep. Sean is a banded ram. These are all lambs, but future hope would be 
that Wooly would breed Rosie and Luna and then we would start building our own little sheep herd and then at some point we will have sheep to have process to have leg of lamb and lamb chops all kinds of sheep related meat products that we raised homegrown on the farm ourselves too so here's miss carmen now she's also a la mancha like jazzy super sweet she's actually jazzy's daughter and then i went back later and got her she's young and then here is miss come here rosie come here girlfriend oh oh i know i know you're like i was eating something you're irritating me woman okay okay oh and these are hair sheep so they don't need sheared uh they get thick coats in the winter they shed out so that's another reason why they're low maintenance and then right here on the other side of the fence hey man hey man uh that's the calf hutch i have in there for right now for these little boy babies call them saint michael this is also midnight um and that's one of our little chickens they find they find their way in there oh midnight's tinkling okay then we have over here we got precious Hey, Precious, you scratching? Their yard goes up yonder. Even though a lot of these boys are miniature, I knew there would be, we've got five in here, and two are banded. Um, and it goes way up along there. And they've been working on eating this down, and so we've left them, we've left them in here in the last uh, week or so. Hi there, hi Stinky. Left them in here while they get used to it and such. We will start rotating them though, and giving them either time out on big lines or time out free ranging. Coming up soon, I want Travis to build me a sheep and goat tractor. So, more exciting things to come. There's the girls eating on their side of the fence. You being nosy? Hmm? And Midnight here, he is going to be great big. He will be bigger than Jazzy. Last thing I know that needs to be done before I milk Jazzy is the meat birds in that dome still need their food. I was gonna get the food for the meat birds that I have out in what we call the garden cage, but someone had already gotten that. And folks have asked if I have a list. We got talking hand here. You know, do I have a list? Do I have assigned chores? Again, the way that my brain works. Um, now, I, I am a list maker, especially when it comes to business and tasks that need done. And I love to dump my day out on the whiteboard as far as family life and such. So how that would look on our whiteboard for today is it says, you know, do animals in the morning and do animals in the evening. And we are getting into routines and habits with the animals. We've had them for several months now. We did have animals before, uh, you know, we've had many flocks of chickens and such. So anyway, and everyone's used to doing farm chore animals with grandmother. So we just know everything needs done, so we do it all. <laughs> we all share the work and bust through and do it. So I'm gonna do the big meat bird in the dome food now. And for our meat birds, this is the food that I've been getting them from Tractor Supply. It's called Nature Wise Meat Bird 22% Crumble. You can see upside down there on the picture. Um, those are some pictures of the Jumbo Cornish Cross because those are pretty much they've been the standard for a bit here. And I keep it in the can when it's open here. And I'll fill up their feeder. And we will also, I'll get a cup full of the, um, the lay-in crumble again, just to love those chickens up in their yard. I'm not gonna move their dome today. It really depends on how many birds you have, how often you move it. This dome is supposed to be for 50 or more birds. Anyway, I like to move the dome, same with the garden cage, every two or so days. I did just move this yesterday. I don't want to move it today because I've been doing farm chores and filming and chatting. And like I say, mama's hot. So one more day, I'll move this tomorrow. You'll see in another video when I do that, but let's go give this crumble now to the other chickens in the run. You're one of the lone chickens, I know, but look what I got. Huh? Can you do it? Now there's also uh, oyster shell, calcium, and grit that you can mix up in their food. I don't always do that. Again, I'm not normally giving them food this time of day anyway. They are out feeding themselves and they will find in nature what they need. But I do a couple times a week when we feed them in the evening, mix in a little grit or oyster shell calcium. And you can also leave that out as like freestanding things that the chickens need. Okay friends, yeehaw, it's evening chore time, except it's not the same day that I filmed the morning chores. You see what happened is, a few days ago I filmed morning chores, and yeah, you can see it's getting evening. It's like, a, well it's 8.45 now. I filmed morning chores, and I went in to get my milk and stuff for Jazzy, 
and we just got like pouring down rain and I did not even think to take my camera to the barn. That was it, I was done. Then that evening I had to work. Kids did the chores, I didn't even do them. So we went to the lake all day today, still in my lake stuff. Some kids are showered and in pajamas. <laughs> We're just all, all levels of, of uh, doneness now. And uh, dogs are barking at me. Turkeys have put themselves to bed tonight. It's actually, it's the turkeys last night because tomorrow is butchering day. We've had a good life, turkeys. Yeah, so come with me to do evening chores, yeehaw. So I'll show you. You need coolers packed with ice whenever you are butchering and processing poultry. Now I know this. So I sent Travis, we were at the lake today on his list. Uh, he got me, I wanted two this size. This is 150 quart, you know I lack my quarts, but 150 quart cooler. Biggest one they had, they only had one of it. And then this one is a 70 quart. We've got things we need coolers for anyway. So these are for butchering day tomorrow. Yes, there's a circus tent behind me, totally appropriate. So first thing we do in the evening, just like in the morning, I go around, gather up all the water buckets, send those to our little watering station, then we fill them all up at one time and start dispersing them. Oh, oh, I just, I turned my camera on and they all jumped out. We had several ducks in their little pool here. And then up here, I'll show you those little babies that have been in this tractor. See, it's nighttime now they're comfortable they go all around the yard together well actually okay a whole bunch of them are in the front yard there <laughs> okay guys these babies are like you took our waters what are, what is with you woman they'll be back they'll be back and then for our meat birds uh, since the four biggest ones will be processed tomorrow I just will pull their food tonight but here's the turkeys in the woods here all stretched out and chilling for the night. Look at this dude on the stump. I tell you, they are just big, big, big. Hey, buddies. Yes, yes. We were saying next year maybe we'll do 12. It's a miracle. We bought six. We raised six. Hey, buddy. You've lived your best life. You sure have. You didn't grow up in a small little cage or anything. You've been able to sleep on trees. Yes. I should have had grain in my pocket. Yes. You girls know you're like this. Thi oh, oh, Carmen. Oh, yes, girl. Yes. Well, it's not what you want. It's just me coming for your water buckets this evening. And Liam's going to get the boy buckets. There you go. That's my little evening egg collection in my shirt. Yes, yes, girls. Evening scraps. They're like, where is dinner? Kids might have got more eggs this morning. So that's how it goes. Some days kids do the morning and I do the evening. Or sometimes we all do the morning, we all do the evening. So, bunch of teamwork. Oh yeah, yeah, dinner's coming, dinner's coming. We've got six eggs here. They probably had six or eight eggs earlier today, too. And now this one. See, you're on the wrong side, aren't you? Once Liam comes down with food, we'll have no problem getting her in. Because she's one of our old girls. Not, She's not really old, she's a year, but we've had her since the forest house. Precious, probably not getting caught on camera, but all the little, uh, the ducks and the geese are running into think oh no they're running around it I thought they were running in their tractor there now if I go walking towards them this time of night yeah they're trying to figure out how to get in it go on in oh yeah your water's not in there so they're like they're complaining they're like wait a minute this is injustice how can we get in there it's coming it's coming I know I'm, are you fussing at me I hear your concerns but you have been out for at least 12 hours You've had bugs and sunshine and farmyard adventures. Yes, and your water's coming. Even though you've had access to water all day, you want it in your coop before we shut the door. I hear this. They've been out free ranging all day, so I will grab their feeder for tonight. Yes, yeah, oh, oh yeah, wow. Now I bet they're all gonna follow me with this. Yeah, yeah they are. Okay, it's that time, it's that time. So again, the animals that free range during the day get fed at night. Animals like the chickens that are being trained to that yard, they get fed in the morning and at night. Gently put in the egg basket, thank I'm you. I'm gonna get you in my shirt. Okay, I know it's gonna start to it's gonna be hard to see here, but I know. Super exciting. Super exciting. Come on, babies. I've got another feeder down there to fill for them, too. But let's look at them all get in there. Come on, you figured it out. Almost. Almost. Come around. If I walk to them. No, no, go this way. Go this way. I promise it's good. And now my goat's coming. Yes, girl. Yes. Okay, well let me let me help you. Oh, you're so nice and soft. Hey, Jazzy girl. Excuse me. Get on in. There you go. There you go. Now we got one lone goose. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, so nice and soft too. Yes, 
Yes. Evening chores tend to take a little shorter period of time than morning chores because in the mornings I just find myself doing more projects, more hands-on stuff, uh, getting stuff set up for the day, letting animals out, taking animals around at night, giving them fresh water, feeding them for the evening, tucking everybody in, making sure everybody is where they need to be. So right now the rest of the water buckets need to be carried, but we're almost done. So friends, there's a peek at doing morning chores and evening chores on our little sudden homestead with us again I didn't show myself milking the goat because that first morning I got caught in rain and then tonight Naomi's taking her turn doing cheeseburger macaroni in the instant pot doing a video for the large family table community all about that we are having that for dinner tonight so I gotta go serve that up for dinner if you would like to see me milking a goat and getting to know my La Mancha Dairy Goat Jazzy. I will link that down in the description below. And you can also see that aspect of our farm. So thank you so much for doing chores with me. Tomorrow's butchering day. Yeehaw, more adventures to come. I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.